Schoology every single grade, and that's the story of the evolution of Wade. It's Friday, and it's time to count down the number 8 to the number 11 most important topics from all year in Integrated 3. And also, even if you know how to do all these problems, which is great by the way, I still want everybody, even the best of the best, to watch number 11, because I have a new method to introduce to you that I would have shown you if we were still in school about how to factor when there's a number sitting in front of the x squared, but how to do it in one step instead of many steps. All right, let's get to number eight first. So first things first, how do we get rid of that square root? Why, Mr. Wade, we square it. But if we square this side, we better square this side. All right, since you're not gonna stop me, I guess I'll just leave the squared on the three and not do anything else special. Wait, Mr. Wade, wait, Mr. Wade, you better be stopping me because it's not three squared. Isn't it x plus three? Who said it at home? Who said it? Quantity squared, parentheses squared. I'll also accept that, right? Okay, that's how you square both sides. All right, square the square root, cancel. x plus 23. Squaring x plus three. Oh, how do you make your math teacher cringe? How do you make Mr. Wade cringe? x squared, nine. Oh, don't ever distribute a power. You cannot distribute an exponent across an addition or subtraction sign. How do you square x plus three? Is anybody saying the magic acronym at home right now? Our old favorite acronym, FOIL, right? First, outer, inner, last. Please don't just square everything inside the parentheses. That'll never work. X times X is X squared. That's one of the reasons I gave you this problem because a lot of students mess this up on the ACT and they just square the two numbers. X times three, that's a plus three X. Three times X, that's a plus three X. Three times three, that's a plus nine. Now we're getting somewhere. There's that thing I used to say in class all the time. If there is one type of x, like x to the first, get x by itself. We've done that before during this review sheet. If there are two or more types of x, you must get the equation equal to zero. Anybody remember this? I see x squareds and I see x's. That's two types of x. You have to get this equation equal to zero or you will never figure out how to solve it. It will be impossible, okay? So, first, we need to be collecting our like terms. So, I've got uh, three armadillos plus three more armadillos. Don't I just have six armadillos? All right, x squareds and also x to the firsts, two types of x. You must get this problem equal to zero. And because the x squared is positive, it's the ruler. It's the strongest term here. If it's positive, leave all these right where they are and bring these two over towards them. Now, if that had been a negative, you'd swing all three of these over the other way. So look at your highest power. Make sure that it's positive. And if it's not, you have to move stuff. Is x squared positive? Yes. So I'm going to subtract these from both sides, like that. So all these come over there, all right? And you get x squared. 6x minus 1x is 5x. And 9 minus 23, by the way, that's exactly the same thing as 23 minus 9, which is 14, but isn't the 23 stronger than 9? So it gets to tell you what power to use, or what, sorry, what sign to use. So minus 14. All right, so two or more types of x have to get it equal to zero. Such an important problem. Now it's time to play one of our old favorite games called Multiply Add, right? Pick the last number and give it a try. We gotta find two numbers that'll multiply. Hey, yo, here's the scoop, kids. We did a real cheesy video about it, but I didn't have much time, sorry. So. Multiply add game. Two parentheses. What makes x squared? 
x times x. Now we need two numbers that multiply to be negative 14, but add to be 5. Well, I'm definitely thinking 7 and 2, that's for sure. 7 times 2 is 14. And we can make a 5 out of that if we play our cards right. Let's see, what if we use a plus 7 and a minus 2? Is 7 minus 2 positive 5? Yes. Is 7 times negative 2 negative 14? Yep. So really this was a factoring problem in disguise with some other very important things in it. Now we list our zeros, our roots, our x-intercepts. Remember those three terms? All those terms mean exactly the same thing, of course. Now, shout out to Silvano Mizzou, because Silvano on the discussion board called this. He said factoring. Well, guess what? All four of these problems today, they're all factoring. Every single one of them, that's how important factoring is. So, when is x plus 7 equal to 0? Well, Mr. Wade, when x is negative 7. When is x minus 2 equal to 0? When x is positive 2. And you're done except for one thing. If the problem had started, let's say, right here. Let's say I told you to solve this problem. Okay, all solutions are valid because this is a pretty normal equation. But when you're dealing with there are two things in math, really, I don't think I ever said this explicitly in this way, but I did say it. So I want you to add this to your notes. There are two times in math and at the integrated three level where you really have to check your answers to see if they're valid. Square roots and logs, or natural logs, either one. A natural log is just a type of log anyway. My phone's running very low, so the audio's probably messed up, but hey, we'll go with it. Let's plug in two and see if that's a legitimate answer. Put it back in the original problem. So square root of two plus 23, this is that thing we used to do in class. Is it equal to, does it equal 2 plus 3? So I put in 2 for x. Is the square root of 25 equal to 5? Oh, look at that. Yes, 5 does equal 5. Check. So 2 is a valid solution. What was the other one? Negative 7? Let's plug negative 7 back in. Negative 7 plus 23, does it equal? Negative 7 plus 3. So I put negative 7 in place of the x's. Let's see. And by the way, your brain would rather not do negative 7 plus 23. Remember your brain would rather do 23 minus 7? 23, take away 7, is 16. Does it equal? Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. Oh, the square root of 16 is 4. Oh, wait. It is 4. It's not negative 4. Square root of 16 is 4, which does not equal negative 4. So it gave us the wrong sign is what happened there. Okay? Er, no good. So the negative 7 does not work. So the only valid answer is 2. All right, the iPhone died. We now go to a backup camera if it looks or sounds a little different. And the iPhone won't even recharge. It's like dead. It's doing nothing. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know. So let's go to number nine, most important problem of the year. And I hope when you see that 25 and especially that 144, boy, does that stand out in math. Perfect square alert, right? It's a... So we make two parentheses, and it is the multiply add game, but it's even easier than that. We know 5x times 5x makes 25x squared. Okay. We know it makes 144, positive 12, and negative 12. If 1's plus and 1's minus, don't we call this the difference, fancy word for subtraction, the difference of two squares. And isn't there always one plus and one minus? And that's it. Okay, I mean, that technically, you know, that is like two numbers that would foil to be all this right here, but don't even worry about that. 
know how to factor your difference of two squares because that's going to come up a lot. All right, number 10. Where do these two graphs intersect each other? The one with a cube is a snake, and the one with the negative x squared is an upside down parabola. Okay, where do two things intersect in math? Extremely important. Two graphs will intersect when they are equal to each other, because they're crossing each other. Simply set these two expressions equal to each other and drop out the y's. So 2x cubed minus 20x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 4x. So finding the intersection of two graphs, very important. Now, are there two or more types of x? Uh, yeah. There are x cubes, x squareds, and x to the firsts. There are all kinds of x. If there are two or more, remember you have to get it equal to zero or there's no way to solve it. So multiple types of x, get it equal to zero. Who's the king? Who's the strongest? Or we can call it the queen, either one. Okay, the strongest is 2x cubed because it's the highest power. Keep the king and queen happy. Keep them positive. Oh, it's already positive. Great. So don't move this. Don't move this. The highest power should be positive. Take these two, swing them over to the other side by adding 2x squared and subtracting 4x. Or if you don't want to write this middle step on both sides, remember you don't have to anymore. All right. So if we do this, we'll get 2x cubed plus 2x squared. And then I lost 20 potatoes, and then I lost four more potatoes. I just lost 24 potatoes. I misplaced them. Darn coyotes? I don't know. Do coyotes eat potatoes? <laughs> Probably. All right. So now we have it equal to zero. Now. Another rule, after you get things equal to zero, if there is a greatest common factor, take it out to the front. Every group has a what number? Two, right? Two goes into two, two goes into two, two goes into 24. Every group also has an x to the first. They don't all have an x squared. These two have a x squared within them, but not this one. So we're going to take out an x. Good things come to you when you take out the greatest common factor. Now we're going to think distributive property in our heads. 2x times something is 2x cubed. 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. 2x times something is 2x squared. 2x times positive x is 2x squared. And finally, 2x times negative 12 is negative 24x. Okay, so a couple of major rules there. Intersection means set them equal. You'll do a lot of that in calculus, by the way. Uh, get it equal to zero because of the multiple types of x. And then factor out the GCF anytime you can. If there's not one, don't do it. If there is one, you pretty much have to do it or you're stuck. And look what's right here. It's our old favorite game called... Our old favorite game. The strategy is the same. So now, I'll drop down to 2x. I'll make two parentheses because I know I have to equals zero, x squared comes from x times x. If I could just get two numbers that multiply to be negative 12 and add to be positive 1. Hmm, what makes 12? 1 times 12, 2 times 6, what about 4 times 3? And I need it to multiply to be a negative, but add to be positive 1. Is positive 4 plus negative 3, positive 1. Does it also multiply to be negative 12? Yes, it works. Now, when is this equal to 0? Find the zeros. Find the roots. Find the x-intercepts. It's all the same, remember? Set each group equal to 0. Or you could pretty much just guess at this point. 
So when does 2x equal 0? Divide both sides by 2. Oh, yeah, 0 divided by anything is 0. There's one solution. Get x by itself, subtract 4 to the other side, and obviously x equals negative 4. And wouldn't this be x equals positive 3? All right, so we get three solutions, three places where the snake and parabola crisscross each other. Because the snake's going like this, and then the parabola is upside down, and so they're, they're hitting it like all kinds of different places here. Three intersection points, all right? You don't have to know that graph, but you do want to get those three points. All right, number 11, finally, last problem of the week. So, we have this, uh, this issue where you have to find x and y intercepts. You're going to have that happen like a billion times over the next two years. So, we talked about this before. Quick way to find a y-intercept, plug in 0 for x, remember this, so replace all the x's with zeros, and you can always get a y-intercept. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 0. Who's the sole survivor? Negative 15. Y-intercept? negative 15. Or if you really want to be fancy, y coordinate negative 15, what's the x coordinate? Oh yeah, we plugged in a bunch of zeros for x. Zero is the x coordinate. So this is fine, even for calculus. This is technically better, but either one's fine. Now we have to find the x-intercepts. To find the x-intercept, wouldn't we plug in zero for y now? Okay, so this is that problem we did earlier in the year where we had to do the rainbow because there's a 2 in front of the x squared, which suddenly makes it a harder problem, if you remember this. We had to do 2 times negative 15 was negative 30. And you had to find two numbers that multiply to be negative 30 and add to be the middle term positive 1. Well, it's time to take the training wheels off of the bicycle. Because here we are at the end of the year, I'm going to show you a new trick. Because, yes, you can go through this, and then you have to split the middle term, and you have to do the whole factor by grouping. If you remember this, it's multiple steps. It's pretty long. It works, but it's long. There's something I've never shown you before, and you probably need it before you go to the next level of mathematics, wherever you go next year, all right? So, here is how we factor this in one step, not 10 steps, one step. All right, we're not gonna play the multiply add game, we're not gonna do the rainbow, we're not gonna split the middle, we're not gonna do factor by grouping. We're gonna do this efficiently for all of my brilliant students out there we're going to go straight to parentheses because this is exactly what you do in higher level classes. If you were to FOIL this to get this, how do you get 2x squared? Isn't that 2x times x? Okay. How do you get the negative 15? You need two numbers that multiply to be negative 15, right? So this is, this is first in FOIL. Now I'm looking at last. And eventually you can do this in your head, but you can do it on paper for this exercise here. What makes negative 15? 5 times negative 3, or negative 5 times positive 3, all right? Or occasionally you'll get like a 1 times negative 15, or negative 1 times positive 15. There aren't many things that multiply to be negative 15. Now, here's the thing. Where does the 1x come from? The 1x comes from 2x times the outer plus whatever this is times x for the inner. Okay? So what you're doing is you're writing out possible things that make 15. And you say 2x times negative 3 would be negative 6x. 
5 times x would be plus 5x. Negative 6x plus 5x is negative 1x. Darn it, I wanted a positive 1x. We were very close. That means you're on the right track, but you need to go to the opposite sign case here. Okay? So 2x times positive 3. That's 6x. Let's make that a 6x. And negative 5 times x is negative 5x. And that, my friends, makes positive x. So you're really foiling in your head to do this, okay? And so you list things that make 15, or you think about it in your head, and you think about the 2x multiplying this one, and then the 5 multiplying the x, and you just make sure it makes positive 1x by addition. All right, one step only. So I expect, definitely expect my top level students to be able to do that because you have to be able to factor these quickly. Now, final answer, let's set each one of these equal to zero and find the zeros. 2x minus five equals zero, that was the first parentheses. x plus three equals zero. All right, add five to both sides. So that would give us, let's put it down here, 2x equals 5, divide both sides by 2, x equals 5 over 2 is one of your answers. What's the other x-intercept? Subtract 3 from both sides, x equals positive 3, oh, sorry, negative 3. Those are your two answers. And I'll see you next week for the final week together of Integrated 3 and the Mr. Wade experience. Wait, 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 don't turn it off yet. For the first time ever, there is bonus content. You ready for this? Go down to the description on this YouTube video. You can actually click on the link for the bonus lesson and it's very short, very, very short, but we're going to uncover a mystery that is only 4,000 feet away from Nashville School of the Arts, all right? Not only that, you'll be able to figure out how I calculated all these steepnesses of all the streets, and you can figure out how steep your own street is, or a nearby super steep street. That's almost a tongue twister. So, check out the bonus content, and let's go behind the scenes of how to calculate steepness using Google Maps, and also solve the mystery near NSA. Hold it now.